What's up, y'all? I'm Will here with Schedule Fly, and this is the Restaurant Owners Uncorked podcast, one of the highest rated hospitality podcasts in the world, brought to you by us at Schedule Fly. We provide a very simple web based restaurant employee scheduling software backed by legendary customer service. If you're on pencil and paper or Excel, or you're on some software with tons of bells and whistles and features you don't need or use, ScheduleFly is the perfect place for you. Easy to use, point, click, and go, and we'll take great care of you. ScheduleFly.com, free trial, check it out. Also, this podcast is brought to you by our sponsors, Pop Menu and The Giving Kitchen and KickFin. And you're going to hear about them in just a minute. First of all, let's talk about today's guest. All right, y'all, this episode is with Brandon Tremier, and Brandon and his wife, Kelly, are Duck Donuts franchisees. They are in the greater Raleigh area uh, in North Carolina. Duck Donuts was started in Duck, North Carolina on the Outer Banks, and they were one of the first franchisees. Super dude. We had a great conversation. If you haven't heard of Duck Donuts, you probably will. We talked about their growth. They've got, uh, they've been growing all over the place, including all over the world now, as far as like a way as like Dubai. Um, But they have an incredible product and they have a great mission and a great way of serving their customers. And Brian is just a freaking cool dude. We had such a good conversation. I really enjoyed talking to him. Uh, Their locations have been scheduled for customers for a really long time. We talked a little bit about that and just had a lot of fun. And Duck Donuts is awesome. So if you have not heard of them and you've got one in your market, go check them out. You will enjoy it. You will enjoy the product and you will enjoy the experience. That I'm very confident of. Thank you all for listening. More episodes coming soon. See ya. Give your team the gift of Pop Menu AI Answering, a simple solution for phones ringing off the hook. AI Answering handles calls 24-7, 365 days a year so your staff can focus on in-person guests. Customize your greetings and responses, answer common questions, promote specials and events, and send follow-up links to ordering and reservations. AI answering handles it all while escalating more complex conversations back to your team. Never miss another tasty revenue opportunity. Pop Menu, the marketing technology platform designed to make growing your restaurant easy. Discover more AI restaurant tools that turn your to-do list into an already done list by requesting a demo today. For a limited time, get $100 off your first month, plus lock in one unchanging monthly rate at popmenu.com. Go now to get $100 off your first month at popmenu.com. Be sure to tell them that Will from Restaurant Owners Uncorked podcast and Schedule Fly sent you. Y'all, this is a great business. I just told you what they like me to say. I will say that we have a lot of mutual customers at Schedule Fly with Pop Menu. They all agree. Great product, great customer service, great results. Check them out, popmenu.com. This episode is also brought to you by The Giving Kitchen. Giving Kitchen provides emergency assistance for food service workers through financial support and a network of community resources. Since its inception in 2013, Giving Kitchen has served over 15,000 food service workers and awarded over $10.5 million dollars to food service workers in crisis. If you or someone you know is a food service worker in crisis, please ask for help. Thegivingkitchen.org. And again, that's thegivingkitchen.org. Y'all, this is a phenomenal organization. Jen, the founder, has been on this podcast. Jen Heidinger Kendrick, check out that episode to hear their full story. But if you know somebody or you need help, go to thegivingkitchen.org incredible, incredible organization and very responsive and has a wonderful mission. Check them out. All right, y'all. Uh, very excited today for quite a few reasons, uh, to have Brandon Tremier on the, on the, uh, podcast. Uh, he is a duck donuts franchisee and, um, he is a current schedule fly customer. He was not a customer for a little while. He was a customer, and then he they moved to something and came back. And we'll talk about that later, Brandon. I'm actually excited um, for so many reasons. One, because you are part of a brand that was started here in our state, here in North Carolina, uh, in Duck, North Carolina. 
So I want to talk a little bit about the history of Duck Donuts. Um, I know you all have had a great growth trajectory. Uh, I think I read somewhere around you know 125 or 130 locations and growing like crazy. And one of the other ones that happens to use ScheduleFly uh, is in State College, Pennsylvania, and my daughter is an employee there at Duck Donuts. Uh, that was great to hear. Well, yeah, man. So y'all, I mean, I, I've got a lot of reasons to really love your brand, but and I've also had the experience um, uh, of going in before she was working there, of going into the state college location. That's why I actually wanted her to get in touch with them. The product's great. The environment was great. Happy people. Like, I was like, sweetheart, like this is a, this will be a really good place to work. You know, if you, you may want to consider it. And so she started working up there in the hockey games. They have a little uh, location over at the hockey arena at state college. I right. started this, this semester and has been, you know, everything she hoped for. So it's been a great experience. But arena is probably a different animal, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I'm sure it is. Uh, but she's really enjoyed it. So, Brand, so Brandon, thank you, Matt. Do me a favor, introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, so my name is Brandon Trimier. Um, I'm a, I am a Duck Donuts franchisee. Um, uh, married to my wife, Kelly. Um, she's actually, we can talk more about that. She's uh, She launched it for our family. Okay. Um, and then we have three kids um, from... 14 down to 12. So we're, uh, we're busy. We like to say we have six kids with the three stores and the three kids. Ooh, so. wait a minute from 14 to 12, three kids. I mean, we have, I mean, the ages. Yeah. yeah. So you, yeah. you kind of went back to back to back. Well, it, uh, two are twins. I guess I should have stipulated. Oh, okay. I was going to yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you explain the math on that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah, that's getting real crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we actually were hoping for one more. Uh, <laughs> so a 14 year old girl and boy girl twins that are 12. Boy girl twins that are 12. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are in the thick of it, man. I got 19. 19 year old daughter that's up there at State College and the 17 year old son and the 14 year old son. So you, you got the. Fun teen years ahead, man. Get ready. Um, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> well, so, okay. Well, you got, that's, look, I mean, that's that's a lot going on. You've got this um, this business that you're running and growing. You've got, uh, you've got three kids. Um, and your so your wife got y'all started. What were you doing prior to this? Yeah, so so we actually, our carry store, carry in North Carolina location was yeah. the first first for us. Um, and it was open December 18th of 2014. Okay. So we have just crested over nine years in that store. And Congrats. my, thank you. Um, my wife, Kelly, she, she left her position and went and did this after we made the, made the decision to take a run at this. Um, and what was, I was she doing? She's working, um, in the nonprofit world. She was okay. with American, American Red Cross. Okay. Um, and, she actually now currently works for Meals on Wheels, um, America, and oh, uh, cool! And in the marketing department with those folks. Um, but so she started uh, Duck Donuts Carry and was in there and living the, as most most franchise owners know, as you're getting off the ground, it is all hands on deck. It is long hours, and uh, mm. she's the one that tackled that back in December of of 2014. Um, so. Uh, and then we opened our Raleigh location in January of 2016. So we're coming up on the seventh anniversary there and our Durham location in May of 2018. Hmm. So we're, a few things. Okay. So she, yeah. so she left, I mean, you had young kids, you had at that, three young kids. And yes. uh, so what were you doing? So, yeah, you asked that question. I was working with a defense contractor. <laughs> kind of oh, wow. Night and day. Uh, we, we moved, we've been in this area uh, for about 11 years now. And we okay. moved down from Washington, D.C. Okay. Um, we're both from Southern Virginia, but have moved around and we're up there doing our thing. And, yeah, so to answer your question, I was with a defense contractor. And we moved down to the area, honestly, just to get a little closer to home. We're both from yeah. Danville, Virginia. I know Danville. Yeah. Off of highway 29. That's it. That's yeah. it. And, uh, we, uh, I was lucky enough to keep the job I was in and down here, um, and worked for actually became a state contract that I was working for. It was all federal stuff up in DC, but this huh. became a state contract here. Okay. Yeah. Danville. I know. In fact, I'll be, I'll be, I'll drive through Danville, uh, next week. Um, drive my daughter up to state college and then heading down to, um, 
through Central Virginia, and we'll be coming home on 29. The Dan mm-hmm. River. Yeah, man. The Mighty Dan. Yes. The Mighty Dan. Okay. So, well, where in Cary is your location? And I ask that because my stepmom uh, lives there, and I'm, I'm there, you know, we're there fairly frequently, so I haven't been to your location there. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's on Kildare Farm Road. Is, is that familiar mm-hmm. with that road? Um, I know I've been on Kildare Farm, yeah. Yeah, Kildare Farm Road, and it's it's kind of near about a half mile from the, the intersection of Kildare Farm Road and Cary Parkway. Um, yeah, she's on exit 287. I mean, you're not far from that. No, we're exit 293 would be the best exit to take to get tires. Um, so okay, not so far. you're a little bit fast. Okay, God, I know exactly where that is. Okay. Um, why did y'all choose duck donuts? I mean, when your wife did, like, were, were y'all, but were you kind of doing your thing and she made this or, or were y'all both in on this together? We were both in on this together. I mean, she obviously was the, the, the full in operator in doing it. Um, like I said, I kept my job and honest, I mean, to be brutally honest, like probably most folks, you know, we, we were, we didn't know, you know, let's see if this takes off before we both give up our, our day jobs. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we, to answer your question, we went to the beach, the Outer Banks. As a kid, I went to the Outer Banks. We never stayed at the beach. We had stayed at a place called Bell's Island. I don't uh-huh. think we were able to get all the way over to the nice beach over there, but we stayed there. And um, and we just kept doing it when our kids were born. I would, you know, I, I enjoyed the Outer Banks. And so we went over there. And so we were fans. We became fans. Our kids loved it. Um, and we came back from our, our, our beach trip um, in 2013 the summer of 2013. And we just thought about it and we're like, man, I wonder if they're ever going to franchise. And uh, we, we came back and a funny little thing we like to tell one of our associate pastors at the church we go to came, we came back and she said to us, she's like, well, did you go to duck donuts? And then, and we had never told her anything and talked about our conversation. And uh, we just thought that was interesting. We, 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 we'd say today that that's divine intervention. <laughs> yeah, man, absolutely. So you so they weren't even franchising at the point, huh? They weren't. And so we started talking about it and just kind of knocked it around for a while. Um, and then, honestly, only a few months later, did we kind of go back to the website and we saw now franchising. Um, and from that point, we, we went and met about, I guess, a few months later, um, near the end of 2013, went and met Russ DiGilio, who's one of the founders yeah. um, and met him in Charlotte actually, and, uh, sat down and talked to him for a while. And, and then, uh, you know, did the, the back and forth and that was it. And then off and running. Is he in Charlotte now? Is that where he lives? No, or? no, he had, he'd flown down. And that was just the easiest airport, I guess, for him to get to. He, um, oh. he's up in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, which is uh-huh. where the corporate office is. Oh, is it really? Okay. Yeah. Duck Donuts is headquartered in Mechanicsburg, PA. Russ DiGilio and the, the family that, that really started this, they're from the Northeast. Um, and they would okay. come down to the Outer Banks. And he tells the story that, you know, there's just no, he's used to the boardwalk donuts up there and, you know, what you can get. And they're hot uh-huh. and all that stuff. And he just said at the Outer Banks, and why can't you get a good donut? And so that sort of launched the idea. And he got together with a guy named Robin Griffith who was basically the culinary side of things. And they started tinkering with recipes and came up with the mix that we have today. It's pretty wild. That's interesting. Like, because yeah. here we had Krispy Kreme that was literally headquartered here in, in North Carolina and he's coming to North Carolina going, I can't get a good dinner. Uh, I mean, well, okay. So were y'all the first franchisee or, I mean, you must've been one of the first. We were, the Cary store was the fourth franchise store to open. Um, oh, wow. Rich, Richmond, Virginia was the first. Okay. Um, and then there was another one, um, in Williamsburg. Okay. Um, sorry. I said that wrong. Williamsburg was the first and then some in Richmond. And then Richmond. Yeah. how many, okay. So how many company stores did they have at the time when they decided to start franchising? At the time four. it was. Wow. Okay. Car- yeah. It was Corolla, Duck, Kitty Hawk and Kill Devil Hills. Okay. Um, do, they, yeah. Do they, uh, how many company owned stores are there now? Is it just still the four or do Zero. Uh, the rest in the family sold. Russ is still on the board and some of the family members still work at the headquarters um, doing different, you know, in different roles. Um, but they sold the, the, the corporate stores to actually the Richmond franchisee. Um, and he's since built two more. So there's one in Nags Head and one in Avon. So there's six over there on the Outer Banks. Okay. Um, well, now you can definitely get a good donut if you're out on the Outer Banks, yeah. wherever you may be. 
It's not hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was looking at it recently, obviously in, in preparation for, for speaking with you, there are 144 stores open now, which including is including a handful, at least that are overseas and far overseas. Correct. I mean, there's like Dubai and a couple of correct. really far flung locations. UAE. Yep. 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 It wow. is. I mean, it's, so it's, it's, it's kind of nuts. And to be, you know, on the kind of, I guess, quote unquote, the ground floor for, for Kelly, my wife and I, it, it's, it's been, it's been wild to watch the evolution. I mean, it, we all, I've said this to Russ in the past. We, he still comes to like franchise m meetings and stuff. And I'll, uh, I'll say to him, you know, remember when you told me that you were going to stick to 200 miles inland from the East coast, that was his, his claim to us. Like, we're not going to grow this too big. It's just going to be up and down the East coast. So. Yeah, that was it. And so now it's literally all over the world. What, what, um, of course, now he that's not his decision anymore. But I have to ask this you, you were okay. First of all, when you're in a franchise environment, it's a, it's clearly a really good thing if you know the brand and personally like the brand and you've experienced the brand and the product and the, you know, the customer service and everything and the mission and everything that comes with it. Um, you you mentioned your pastor and you mentioned divine intervention. So you and your, your family, you're, you're, you're of, of people of faith. Um, I would imagine that the, the values, uh, the mission of the organization needed to align with you also. What, I mean, did you, when you, you liked duck donuts and, and Kelly's thinking, okay, well, we want to go try something new. Did y'all look at other franchise opportunities or was duck just, it was just like, you knew this was it. That's a, that's a great question. Well, I, to be honest, I think we tinkered with looking at it. Maybe we've gone to a website or two, but never anything as hard as we looked at duck donuts and, okay. you know, you kind of triggered some, I, I think maybe for us, it's our whole family can enjoy it and mm -hmm. everyone's family can enjoy it. We certainly try to promote our environments and our stores to be family friendly. We want the kids in there and, you know, that's hats off to, to the brand and the way they've developed it. We have this step. If you've been in a store, you know, there's a step so the kids can see the donuts um, yeah. being made. Um, yeah. And so it's 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 an experience as much as it is just going out to grab some donuts for the family. Um, and so that I think that is kind of the one of the uh, one of the things that captured us. OK. Um, yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, tell me about I mean, what? OK, so you've got. Dunkin' Donuts, you got Krispy Kreme. Um, what makes you all think you can come in here and enter this this donut space? I, I'm I'm actually I'm joking, but I mean I'm curious. Like I, I know that they couldn't get a good donut there, but then that's that. That's a few stores or whatever. Then, like, how has Duck Donuts been able to enter a space where these two massive national or international brands have, you know, been just kind of battling it out for, for so long. I mean, I, I have some ideas of what I would intuit are probably your differentiators. Um, but I'd, I'd, I'm curious about that. Uh, I'm sure you're thinking about the same thing for us. It is the made to order. It's yeah. the made to order concept and the customized concept. I mean, there are some, some of our, some of those folks you're mentioning are on the fringe of being able to customize some things, or they've really ventured out into their flavor offerings. But there's nothing, certainly not in our area. There's a few around the country, but nothing that's really got a foothold that does that that do what we do um, in the way we do it. And being able to watch, build your own donut, or choose some of our you know popular flavors, and yeah. you know, but know that it's being made then. It, it wasn't made an hour ago or two hours ago. Well, I mean, one thing, you know, Dunkin' Donuts is now just Dunkin' and they do, I mean, a lot of their sales are the, the drinks. I don't, I don't really know as much about Krispy Kreme, but I mean, like Dunkin's kind of like more like competing almost with Starbucks, I think now. Um, what I would think y'all have is not only the customization, but what you mentioned, just the, just the, the kid friendly, family friendly place you want to go, smiles and happy, not just all about just, you know, quick product in and out the door, drive through only whatever. Uh, right. I mean, I, I would enjoy taking my family. I have, we've been to the one there in state college and it was an enjoyable experience. Um, different than what, you know, you may get n not somewhere else. Yeah, no, for sure. It's not, this, this word seems cliche, but it's transactional, you know, we're, we're, also, we're also doing transactions, but you know, it's, you know, you walk in and, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to create a culture and inviting 
environment that you walk into and try to greet everybody, assuming we see you come in and we're not too, too busy um, and try to walk people through it, explain it. Yeah, it should be an enjoyable experience and not just walk in, point out a couple of donuts and pay and leave. That's the idea. <laughs> So yeah. you've got, okay, so nine years, and then the second location you opened, how many years later? Was it two years? It'll be, it, yeah, a, a, just over two years. Okay, so, so that was Raleigh. Coming up on seven years on that one, yeah. Okay, and then the third is? Third is, is was May of, 20, 20, uh, uh, May of 2018. Yeah, 2018. so we're over five. Um, okay. And we're, we're about to start swinging hammers as soon as permits come through on a fourth in central Raleigh. Congratulations. Where is Central Raleigh? Where does that mean? Is that downtown or is that? You know, well, it's funny. It's probably the first time I've ever described it that way. I only say it because our other, our Raleigh location is North Raleigh. And this yeah. is down further closer to downtown. It's not downtown, but yeah. it's, uh, it's, if you're familiar, it's Lake Boone Trail. Is Yeah. I mean, a little bit. Are you, is like North Raleigh, like North Hills or something? Like, is it sort of that area or is that? No, it's, it's, it's further north up near five. Like Wake, Wake Forest. Oh, five. Okay. Gotcha. Going that okay. way. Not quite to Wake Forest, but going that way. Yeah. How do you, okay. How do you decide on a location? Like there's all these opportunities. There's probably, I mean, like, how do you go? That's the one. Now, I, obviously there's got to be some intuition. There's got to be some data. There's probably got to be some, uh, I would imagine the, the, the landlord and the lease offerings are a big part of this, but like, what's the, what's the calculus where you go, we're going to sign and this is the place. So, yeah, it, it's a great question. And one that we, we are probably, I won't say different, but we definitely have maybe a different uh, point of view at, at searching for things. Our, our locations, our, our thing is, we are a destination. We think people will come to us. Okay. Um, so location absolutely is important. And all those factors you said, yeah, I mean, the, the numbers got to be right. I mean, our average ticket is not an average ticket of your normal, you know, QSR, quick service. Um, yeah. You know, we're lower, so we need we need volume. Um, but we also, so, but we don't have drive throughs um, So no drive throughs No drive throughs um, I think they tried one in Virginia beach. I don't know that they still operate it. Okay. Um, but to answer your question, I mean, it, it's all those things. Will it is, it is making sure the numbers work for us. We do look at data and look at, I mean, obviously traffic and I mean, it's all, you know, what's coming by the, the, the income circumference around the location, all that good stuff. Um, but we do think that it's a broader look, than just some of that data right around the store location because we think that we have a product and a service we hope that that will just bring people out we and in carry before we opened our raleigh location um we'd have a family for, that would come in every weekend from chapel hill and i think you know the area a little bit that's not a small drive no that's a commitment yeah so and and, and so i do believe I do believe that you know as a destination location is certainly important but making sure you're in the right space and have the right folks in the store, I think we'll make them, make them come to us. Customize, made right there. Very unique. Tell me about, tell me about the, the people part of this. Um, the, 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 the importance of getting the right people in place. And I say that again, my experience has been there in that state college store. Uh, it's always just been a, a pleasant experience happy team members, uh, I've, you know, and I've, the same people have been there, which to me is, says a lot because if the same people are there, that means that they're probably treated well and they're probably happy. And it's just a good, consistent feeling as a customer. Um, how much of like, how do you find and keep really good people and how important is that in terms of your overall success, particularly in an environment where it is really hard to find and keep really good people, particularly the, the younger demographic that has lots of options these days and has uh, the axis is really tilted towards, you know, their schedule versus your schedule and needing to accommodate a lot of that. I, I see that a lot. I'm assuming you'll deal with that too. And you're, you're so right. Well, yeah, that's, that's um, hands down the hardest part. Um, it has gotten, you know, 
decently harder over the last couple of years. And we're not alone. We know, you know, QSR and any any industry really is is struggling with that. And I think obviously there's there's been a shift in the workforce. Um, you know, how do we find those folks? I mean, we, you know, we really want it to be word of mouth. We'd rather hire off of our current team members referrals. And we do that a lot. Um, I'm not saying you're, you're definitely getting hired, but if someone that we know comes to us and says, Hey, I have a buddy or I have a little brother or something like, I mean, the answer is generally bring them on. Let's do it. Um, and you know, obviously wage is a huge factor for everyone. Look, I mean, it's it, it, at the end of the day, folks are are needing to earn, earn a living or if, if they're kids, they're, they're wanting to earn gas money or earn some money to go do something with their friends. And we do understand that. Um, where Kelly and I probably differentiate quite a bit is um, as far as wages. Um, I think the the brand, I mean, m- most folks would, would say that you want to be somewhere in the, you know, 18 to 20% of your revenue needs to be going to labor. We're fine if our labor falls out at 25 to 28%. Um, okay. We, we wholly believe, and you touched on it, if we don't have the right people in place and they are not excited about coming into work and doing the job, then it's all going to fall apart. That's just how it is. And I think that's within the industry, but it's certainly uh, certainly shown itself in the last couple of years in the QSR industry. Man, it is all these immeasurable um but powerful costs if you don't have the right people there. I mean, even just turnover is expensive. It's bringing new people in. It takes attention away from so many other things. So finding people that will just show up when they're, when they're on the schedule, uh, smile, be intentional and present with guests. I mean, the, it, it, we, I just did an episode, um, and we were talking about how the there's a real, unfortunately, but then in some ways, fortunately, if you get this right, the bar is really, really low right now for customer service and hospitality and retail. Our expectations are so low that when we have a, what you and I might've would consider an experience that of of course that's how you, like when you have that nowadays, it, it wows you, right? Because you're like, Oh, they smiled at me. They, you know, they were, mentally present and, and asked me how I'm doing and it did and, and everything didn't seem manufactured and there was some authenticity there and they seemed to be enjoying what they do. Like that's like this awesome experience now. So as, as we, as we move to more technology and automation and, and, and things like that where it's needed and where it can help, you know, create efficiencies and, and cut costs and things like that. I, I feel like we're at this point where if if you if you're able to deliver through your people an experience that does not have to be some unachievable thing. It's just some some kind of basic repeatable things where it seems like the people there are happy and care that you are there. It is like an amazing differentiator. And I, I, like my daughter had this job this, this summer as a hostess. And I would tell her all the time, I'd be like, Hey, listen, I want you to do one thing today. Just make sure that everybody that comes in, look them in the eyes and smile and tell them, thanks for coming in. And then when they're leaving, I want you to look them in the eyes and say, Hey, thank you all so much for coming in today. We appreciate you you will be blown, like people will stop in their tracks, like you'll be blown away. And But it, it's amazing what just those little things will do. And I really tried to impart that on her for a bigger life lesson, of course. But like she would say like, yeah, it's like amazing. Like when you, you know, you thank somebody when they're leaving, they're like, oh, wow. <laughs> they're like surprised. You're, you're so right. It's, uh, it is, it is a, a weird the weird time we live in now when that does really resonate with folks that that personal interaction that takes two seconds to, to, to say something, but it's, you know, it's uh, the mission that Russ, the statement, the mission statement, I guess that he would put out, I can't recite it for you, but it has a lot to do with family and, you know, our family serving yours. And 
you know, we want them to be satisfied, uh, more than satisfied. And we want to, you know, meet all the needs. It's just, it's, it is such a small, a small thing to do just to greet someone these days. And, you know, and we're, we're not immune to this part of it, you know, as we've all moved in to the convenience era of online ordering and third party deliveries or delivery. If you have it, we don't do that. We use the third party folks. Um, you know, that, that personal interaction is, and then just leaving things on doorsteps these days, you know, even the, we just don't have, have that personal interaction a lot. So I think to your point, when we have the ability or the chance to do that, we should always do it. And you're right. It, it will stop people in their tracks um, and it lets them take notice. And I think that's positive. All right, y'all. It is time for a little mid episode break. We're going to talk about kick fin. Thousands of restaurants, bars, and breweries use KickFin to tip out their employees instantly. No cash required. With KickFin, tips go directly to your employees' bank of choice the second their shift ends. It's a really simple solution to a really big problem because if you're still paying out credit card tips in cash, it's costing you. Time-consuming bank runs and cash counting take managers away from work that matters. Cash is hard to track, which leads to accounting headaches and it creates the perfect opportunity for theft, human error, and compliance issues. Bottom line, there's never been an instant secure way to pay out tips until KickFin. It's an easy-to-use software that sends real-time, cashless tip payouts straight to your employees' bank accounts, 24-7, 365. KickFin gives managers hours back in their day, makes reporting a breeze, and protects your business from risk. Most importantly, employees love it. Restaurants can have KickFin up and running overnight. Employees can enroll in seconds. No hardware, no contracts, no setup fees. Visit kickfin.com for a personalized demo. See how restaurants across the country are digitizing tips with KickFin. All right, that's what they asked me to say. So I say it, and it tells the story very well, but I like to add this in. We referred a customer that we know and love very well, Sup Dogs to kick fin sup dogs has been a customer for a super long time trust them very much with their opinion on these types of tools they started using kick fin i asked brett the owner recently how it's going he said kick fin is perfect it's going great exactly what we were hoping for so there you go kickfin.com y'all check them out i want to ask you about this so you're a you find you feel like you're a destination people will come they'll come from chapel hill they, how, how much of your business is through the the delivery apps now yeah i mean we pro we probably do 15 to 18 percent okay okay through there um i mean and it depends on the month depends on if there's a holiday things like that we can creep up into the 30 to 40 percent um okay. just because you know if it's a busy day um during the week we see it more obviously um but it, yeah i mean that that part has certainly increased um where as I'm not the biggest fan of that, we don't have that personalization. It's not that we're completely devoiding our our uh, our, our core concept of, of being an experience, but we certainly lose that personal touch. Um, but it's it's kind of the way of the world, uh, you know. People, it's a tough thing, man. I know, I know. We can't you can't do it if we if we if we stop using those third party delivery services, we would see a pretty significant impact. Yeah, that was my next question is what would be, you know, the, I mean, because you're part of what y'all do is that experience and it is the step and it's seeing it made and it's customization and it's a destination place. But you've got, I guess what you're saying is, you know, you still, you have to be realistic and know that you're, there is a portion of the audience that they just, and maybe right now they just want the product, but that's one time out of 10, the other nine, they're coming in or whatever, but they've grown to love the product or maybe they order the product. They're like, this is really good. Let's, let's take the whole family there or whatever. I'm, I'm assuming that you get a little bit of both. That's it. You got yeah. it. I mean, and I, me being nostalgic, I suppose, like I, I, you know, I look at it, I'm not fighting against the change, but I do look at it and think, you know, this is built on the experience and coming in and watching it being made from start to finish and walking out with your donuts. Um, but the second we launched online ordering and, you know, doing the third party deliveries, you know, we obviously that that piece is, you know, we, we don't do that as much. 
um, to everybody. But yes, to your point, I think if we can still deliver the great product that we serve and they get that, if they get it through a third party delivery driver, we hope that we'll wow them with the with the product. And then yes, then they'll come in. Maybe we'll won't see them during the week, but we'll see them on the weekend. Hopefully. Well, I suppose if y'all didn't have that at all, then you probably, I mean, you may be maybe you're not opening your fourth location. I mean, it, it probably helps enable, you know, through through three locations at 15 to 20 or up to 30%, then that means that you, that's basically enabling, enabling y'all to grow and to Absolutely. put your brand mm-hmm. in, in more locations. Do you have yeah. like the, what is, you have like a geographic footprint that y'all own, like Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill or something like that, or? You got it. Yeah, it's the triangle, but we're, we're so we have rights to five. So this will be the fourth and we'll okay. do one more. And that one more is is somewhere around the airportish area. If you you know okay. this area it's around there, yeah. um, uh, and I think I think we'd probably be done after that. <laughs> as five, far as five, yeah, uh, that was a lot. Unless we can, you know, right now it is it's just Kelly and I. Uh, we don't have, you know, we're the the model we've run and we find to be successful for us is we have GMs in each of our stores. Um, okay. but we don't have a regional person. You're you're okay. looking at our our area director yeah. uh, or whatever, all the different hats that we wear. And so that's how we, we run it. If we were to expand too much more, I think we'd need to hire somebody in to help with that. Yeah. Okay. Well with five and then your kids will get to a point where you probably got them in there cranking out some donuts too, at some point. They're in there now. <laughs> oh, they're in there now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just hanging. <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha. you. Okay. I yeah. got gotcha. you. 14. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. So then that model, you, so y'all have flexibility as franchisees with that model about whether you, like when you need an area director or all, like you've got the ability to make those decisions on your own. Yeah. You know, I guess that, I mean, Duck Donuts is, I mean, the the first store was 2007 on the beach. Um, okay. So relatively young. Yeah. So as far as being, uh, you know, having that level of, you know, those sorts of rules or regulations as far as how you operate in an area. Yeah. We don't have them. Uh, Duck Dunnets doesn't have that out there. I'm not saying it's not coming, but right now it's, you know, they just want you to operate good stores and, and do everything you can to be profitable. And hopefully they're a good partner in that as well. So, who, did they sell to private equity or who, who, who it, they did. I was going to yeah. mention that. Yeah. Sold to private equity. Um, gosh, I, I guess now we're in this year. I guess it's been four years, three okay. to four years ago. What's, um, what's changed? For us on the, you know, boots on the ground, nothing. Um, I mean, it is, it is the growth you're, you're, you've, you mentioned earlier a, abroad. Um, and just, I mean, I haven't looked at the development spreadsheet in the past couple of weeks, I suppose, but there's a lot on the books to be built. So I think that's, that's the change is that they want to, you know, explosive growth, which if I'm being honest, can be worrisome. I'm not saying that that brand shouldn't evolve and grow because we absolutely want that. We want the brand to evolve, grow, get more popular. You know, that's good for everyone. Um, But I worry that we're, we're not the brand that a frequent customer for us is like a couple times a month. Mm. Uh, You know, you're not, you're not coming to us every day and that's okay. Um, yeah. we're a treat. Um, so, uh, so I guess back to the expansion part is, you know, if, if we put, if we've put 15 to 20 in a single market, um, I don't think they'll sustain themselves. I think mm-hmm. you'll have to them because you just don't get enough folks that go enough times. We're not the QSR where you, you could go there and eat three times a week. And we're not, right. we don't see that sort of frequency. A couple times a month kind of thing. Yeah. Well, well, if you go international, of course, now you've just got, I mean, there's, there's lots of room to grow with seven, seven billion people or whatever. Uh, so, uh, okay. Well, um, that's interesting. So, and then you're, uh, so you've got your, what was your timing on your fourth, you said? I mean, we literally hoping to get, we're in final review now, hoping to get the permit next week would be nice. Um, and then we have, we contractor that's built out all three of ours. Um, okay. And he's, he's ready to rock. So we just got to start, we'll start swinging hammers as soon as we can get the permit. How long does the build out take? 
it'll it depend. Now it's a lot different from 2018 when we built out the Durham store. Um, as yeah. far as you know, this as far as supplies and getting things. Um, but generally, I'd it's a wide range. I'll say eight to twelve weeks. Um, okay. Um, Cause it's not, I mean, we know what we got to do and you know, but it's, it's not a huge upfit, but this one is a first generation space. So we gotta, we gotta put it's in a bigger equipment. Yeah. Yeah. All out. yeah. yeah. Well, eight to 12, eight to 12 weeks is okay. I guess I'm, yeah, that, that's not, that's not too bad. It's, if it's, you can still get not, it done that quickly, you probably getting good at done that quickly a couple of years ago, but I bet maybe you can now. Yeah. I mean, we just got, it's just some, some of the big equipment like the hood and, HVACs and things to make sure we can get those in quick. Now, not to get into the details, but if we can move equipment in quick, we can get it built out quick. Have you learned, like, have you learned things that you do differently now with, like, negotiating a lease? Like, have you learned from location one to two to three to this one about things you've you do differently or or, or lessons you've learned from that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, some of the some of the small stuff we used to sweat and worry about that would bite us later on. We know isn't gonna bite us. Um, we we pay attention to the landlord, um, meaning I, I want to know. You know, I do go and talk to which we didn't do in the beginning. Go, I'll go and talk to other, you know, folks who are who have a lease under them. Mm. I want to know what they think, um, how they've been treated in certain times, um, and so that sort of stuff. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, and a lot, of, but these days, at least in this current moment in time, like the, it is a, it, it's not necessarily a retailer's uh, market. It is a landlord's market. Um, so, but we, you know, look for the right location and, and we've been super pleased with our, with this new landlord. We're, you know, going through the, the puts and stops with the permitting and all that stuff. They've been super great. So. I'm, I'm hoping that means we'll have a good relationship with them. I should know this because I've got it right right here uh, in our database. But I mean, how many staff do you have per location typically? Yeah, no, uh, our, our, it depends on volume, obviously. Uh, typically, Carry Store has around thirty, mm. and then the other two stores have around fifteen ish. Um, okay. So, I mean, we're open. We're open ninety one hours a week. Uh, we're open uh, 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, depending on volume, and obviously we've learned, you know, which day parts require what sort of team members and the, the strength of the team members that we need there for certain day parts. Um, and so we'll, you can run a store in certain times of the day and during the week with a couple people. Um but then you got to beef up in the early mornings, beef up in the evenings at some stores. Um, weekends are obviously where we, it's not all hands on deck, but it's a lot of, as many folks as we can get in there to make sure we can fill the demand and create a good experience. Saturday morning, man. So 6 a.m. So that means when is somebody showing up? Yeah, I mean, our, our generally our GMs, I mean, and then our other managers too. But to answer your question, around 5.15? Yeah. Okay. Um, you got to, I mean, to turn, turn the fryers on. And then get everything set. Um, People are buying donuts at 6 a.m. these days. They still yeah. get up and go in there at 6 a.m. Do they? Really? Yeah, yeah. We'll have. Uh, I was in. I'm up really early most days. Uh, I was in our carry store this morning, and uh, yeah, we had a we had a DoorDash driver come in at uh, six six oh eight. <laughs> really? I mean, we knew it, it had popped out on us, so we knew it was coming. But yeah, but that's okay. That's you know. It's, I think, you know, we're a different animal. We have a different guest than the beach. And that's all I keep going back to that. But it's, it is a different thing there. Uh, here it's business folks or, you know, or teachers, yeah. folks that yeah. have the, they started early or, or doctors and nurses or hospital administrators, you know, they're, they're looking for early morning meetings to kick off their teams and they want to bring them a treat. You know, we see that a lot and that's wonderful. That's, that's the type of business that we want to see and continue to foster and build do you That's get what, any do you think you get extra business because we're a north it's a north carolina based business like people are proud that like hey these guys are this is you know from duck like does that help you being here in north carolina i would think it would i do believe that will i do i mean it just yeah. i know many of the franchise owners across the country now um the guy in texas who's wonderful who's actually his daughter goes to nc state so he knows the area really well um but he's out there i mean he he's like 
you get people who are like, what is duck donuts and is it duck fat? Do you frighten duck fat? What <laughs> crazy questions? You know, like and, and, and so they have no idea. That's great. <laughs> like they, they don't know what the Outer Banks is. They don't know what that means. Uh, so to answer your question, yeah, I think it does mean something because people, you know, there's a sense of pride. This is a this is a North Carolina born brand. Um, I do think that helps us, um, and we're we're grateful for that. Um, so yeah, but yeah, it's it's interesting. How many locations are in North Carolina? Do you know? Man, I knew you were going to ask, and I should have looked that up. I I, I want to say there's, I want to say there's sixteen. Okay. I, I, yeah, I know I, y'all are in Char- I, The folks here in the studio were telling me that they they uh, really like duck, duck duck donuts. I haven't been to the wherever y'all are in the Charlotte area. Yeah, I live out in Waxhaw, and I just don't. Okay. I just kind of. Yeah. St- Stay out there most of the time, uh, but I'll have to I'll have to find the the one here. Well, uh, um, so okay, so uh, I have to ask about this because it was just such an interesting turn of events. Is that you, your locations uh, called us at some point this summer and said, "Hey, you know, we got to we're, we're we're moving to a, in a different direction. We don't have to get into what company that was, but you went to a different scheduling software for like a month, and then you came back. So first. Thank you. <laughs> We're always happy to turn somebody back on, but I'm just curious without getting into too much detail about that. Like w- what happened? Yeah. Uh, what happened is uh, nothing else is schedule fly. That's what happened. <laughs> All right. <laughs> why did y'all use, why did you go to something different? Did you just, hear- it was the, the duck donuts had like set up a deal with them. Oh, um, I see. They recommended like, hey, that you okay. guys give these folks to try, but will it was more expensive. And, and not that you guys are, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, it wasn't a lot more expensive, but it was a little more expensive. And, um, but on, it was the bells and whistles that they promised. I, you know, this is something, and I said this to them, I gave them feedback, not emotional, just honest feedback to get set up with schedule fly and to get things moving. And, you know, Kelly did, did that, but I did, I helped with the other two stores, but with Carrie, I mean, she did the one yeah. and she, she's always said, it's so simple. It's so easy. Yeah to, to onboard with you guys. And some of the bells and whistles, they integrate with, with our payroll vendor, this, this other company, all that stuff. But to do that as a small business owner, I need that to happen within, I'll give it a half a day to do it. That's really all the time I have, but this turned into over a couple of weeks. I just uh-huh. do not have the time to commit to that. Yeah. Um, and it just takes away from things. And, you know, there are fires, you know, blazing every day. Um, and I, and that's what I said, you know, like a small, you guys are, are very, um, you're just so you're very focused on the small business. I think, I mean, the way oh, 100% man, yeah. and I, it, you, you got, I think you have a true understanding of, of what our days are like, um, and to sit down and, and we, we need you, we need you badly, but we don't, we can't devote, you know, week, two weeks to one vendor to get things off the ground. It's just, we just don't have the time to do that. Other things slip and, and that can be detrimental to the business. So um, that's what happened. We just, we'd like, we, the bells and whistles looked bright and shiny, but when I got into it they were like, well, you need to do this and you need to do all this. And I'm like, I don't have time to do all that. It's nuts. So there is a, there is a, a place and a need for some organizations to have that. But we also have always known that there is a place and a need for a lot of people to just have something that's super simple and to be readily available to take care, you know, of you if there's questions, but we've never done it in 17 years now. This is our 17th year. We've never done a training session. Nobody's ever been trained on schedule fly. It's point, click and go. And if you have questions, you call. And I mean, like when I'm not doing a podcast, I answer like to this day, this is my phone. They come right to me and I help somebody out blind. I can be driving down the road and help somebody out because it's that simple, right? And that's that's really important because what we there's a lot like in software the the typical playbook is like VC backed, fast growth, adding bells and whistles, and they talk about quote stickiness. Like the idea is that we want this to be sticky and hard to unwind so that we can get our tentacles in there. Like that's what's really going on, and um, that's fine. That's how a lot of software businesses work. Ours is. Zero friction, 
zero prices increases in all these years, zero headaches, barely any time, hopefully on the software, because you got a bit that's to the point, you got a business to run and it's just a different model. It's like, it's monthly. And it's like, when you turn it off, it was like, Hey, we're going to turn this off. Okay. No problem. We got you. If you ever need anything, let us know. And you turn it off and it's done. And there's not like, well, I have to keep calling because there's charges. on. It's like done. And then you call back and you're like, Hey, I think we're going to come back. Okay. Boom. Click a button. We get, we love you. We're happy to have you back and move on. Like that's how we want this thing to be. And because the people that we serve do, you know, typically have a small business and they they own a, a restaurant or a group of restaurants or donut shops or coffee shops or a brewery. And it's like not some big scaled up massive organization. It's just, I got this business to run and I take good care of my customers and I try to make things easy for them. Well, if that's who you serve, then you should, you know, I think you should <laughs> provide the same thing that y'all are doing for your customer. Anyway, didn't mean to get in all that, but that's, that's just our whole, you know, philosophy. I don't want to say it's a lost art, but maybe it's a lost art. I don't know. You it's guys, getting there, man. It's getting you know, there. Uh, Russ DiGilio, uh, he always had this, you know, it's, it, everyone knows it, but he used to say it a lot. You know, the, the kiss, the kiss principle, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it you simple, know? stupid. Yeah. And you guys, it's it just, it, it was, it was wonderful. And yeah, when I, when I was going through that and, the teams weren't, you know, there were obviously some growing, well, what I chalked up to, oh, this is just growing pains. We'll get through it. But with the, the, some of the team members were like, I don't know, this won't do this. Here's this little small thing on this particular one. We couldn't print out a paper schedule. We still do that. We put it on the cork board just so people a lot know. Of people do. Yeah. And you couldn't print it out without all sorts of personal data coming on that thing. I was, and I asked them, I was like, why can't I do that? They're like, well, it's just not how it's built. I'm like, okay whatever. Um, so you guys are wonderful. We print yours out every week and for, for, for the next two weeks and everybody knows what's going on. People love the, uh, the crib sheet, man. I got that thing yeah. is like get the crib sheet emailed every morning to print that thing. Well, look, okay. First, please tell Kelly, thank you. Um, and tell your kids, thank you because y'all, you know, your, your whole family's involved in this and we appreciate you. Um, and then I have to say thank you to just duck donuts in general, because I've been really, I mean, it's, it's super exciting. It's a, it's so exciting for me to have m my daughter working for a company that she's happy with that uses schedule fly, <laughs> like, like yeah, Greg great. white up there, Greg white up there in state college, man. He's, a, he's awesome. He's a great dude. I've talked to him multiple times. He's a, he's one of the owners up there. Super good dude. Yeah. Um, they take great care of their people up there. So that's off to them. And, uh, yeah, you know, look, it's challenging for us because you got, you know, you've got an ownership, private equity owns this and we've got competitors that are probably have the same people involved and really, you know, like the, it's, it's hard for us to get like that kind of, um, buy-in from, because we don't have those resources and those connections and things like that. So all we can do is just kind of keep the software working, take good care of people and let the chips fall. They may, but I got you on here. So I'll say if anybody is listening from the duck donuts world, we got a great product that we would love to serve. I think we have like, I don't know, like seven or eight locations or whatever it is. Um, three of them are y'all's. So, um, but we appreciate any, anybody. I would always, I mean, anyone who says anything and certainly now, if there's a, you know, if there's folks who ask about this, you know, I'm not disparaging people, but you guys have just been a, a, something that's a stalwart and we have used forever, except for the one little blip. <laughs> um, it was like a month. So we'll, we'll yeah, it wasn't, you. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't even count it. I say we're continuous. <laughs> well, and to that point, when I called back, I didn't think it would be tough, but I was like, if they have purged all this data, I mean, whatever, it, it'd be our issue to deal with, but certainly call back and you guys, it, it's on, I think I heard this flip, just put the <laughs> yes. switch on the phone. Like, are you yeah. on? I'm like, yeah. all right. So that was yeah. wonderful. We, we appreciate that. And the customer service has always been wonderful. And it's just, it's something we can count on. And every small business owner needs vendors they can count on. And that's it. Well, look, Brandon, uh, please do tell Kelly, thank you, your kids, your family. Um, we appreciate y'all. I appreciate you taking the time to come on here. I am going to be in possibly Snowden State College on Saturday. Right. That's where we're going to leave tomorrow. We were supposed to leave Sunday, right. but we, so I, I'm going to be going and getting a donut uh, there, there in State College. And I will definitely, 100%, next time I'm up in Cary, which shouldn't be too long from now, um, I'm coming by there. And Reach uh, out to me. I'll, I'll come meet you. If I'm yeah, not there, I'll meet you. I got to bring you all some uh, 
we got these tube socks that say fly. Uh, these are real popular. And then uh, we got hats and stuff like that. So I'll bring y'all some, some merch, some fly gear. I'm sure the team would love that stuff. That's great. Brother, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Congrats on what a great story. I mean, from, you know, what y'all were doing before to where you are now. And now Kelly's back doing something that she obviously loves. So this is a cool story. And I congratulate you and tip my hat to you. And I thank you and appreciate you for the time and, and for sharing. Well, I certainly appreciate you inviting me. It's, it's been good. I appreciate it, Will. Thanks for right, what man. you guys do. Have a good one. Yeah, take care. All right. See you.